Hey everyone. This week I wanted to build on what we talked about last week, which was all around visibility and the transformation for free element. That idea that some of these low tech, low cost, low investment ideas can really start to shape and shift your transformation. So today I want to talk about prioritization. Prioritization for it to work really effectively is predicated on visibility visibility of the work, visibility of what's going on in your organization, visibility of all of those things that are happening in our environment so that we can start to make choices about where things happen and how they happen. And when I talk to people about prioritization, often people will say to me, yep, got it. We know what our top few priorities are. It's this, this, and this. Great, cool. And then what happens when we scale that up to a entire portfolio of multiple hundreds of people? And we've all got a few different priorities. Oh, well, we start to put them into top, medium, and low priority. So that's great, but it's not prioritization in the sense that I mean it. What I mean when I say prioritization is not the categorization. It's not about your top priority, your high priority, your low priority. That's far too easy to start to build these clusters and these masses of work, which are all important. And then all that happens is that we still get back into that space of squeaky wheel. And so we've got a whole bunch of things on our plate that are super high priority. We've started all of that work. We've made an executive decision and then we've walked away and it's left with our teams to deliver. And what happens is that that poor lowly person who's down the bottom of the food chain probably has about seven different things on their plate, probably more like 17,000. But across those seven things that they're working on, they might be working for seven different bosses. And that's a high priority item for each of those people that they're working for. And so this person has to manage what's going on around those seven priorities based on the input that they're getting from those people around them. We fall into this squeaky wheel because it's all high priority. So from each of those seven people's perspective, their thing is the number one thing that that person should be working on. Don't worry about the rest of it. You're in my project. I've booked you for this period of time. You're a 30% resource. This is the most important thing. Take a step to the left and the, the next person is doing the same thing. This is the most important. We've booked you for 30% of your time. Make sure that you're doing my bit first. And this poor person is sitting there going, there's all this stuff on my plate, how to make a decision? Well, that person's yelling at me. That person hasn't yelled at me for a couple of weeks. Maybe I like that person a lot. That one I'm not so sure on. And you start to make these priority calls. And so the choices about what work we do and what order in which we do work are being made, whether it's at the level of the person who's doing the work, whether it's what we we think it's happening at the project manager level where we're managing stuff, right, or the executive level where we're managing priorities. Um, not always the case, but those, those priority calls are being made wherever they're being made in the organization. And the trouble with categorizing rather than prioritizing is that we end up with the same problem of a whole bunch of work, people spread too thin, and trying to make those calls ourselves as individuals or as groups of individuals, but we're making those decisions within the silo of our own um, our own perspective on the world. We maybe don't have the broader picture of what's going on across the organization to know what that right priority call is. It's just part of being human in a large corporate. We don't necessarily have that full visibility. And so when I teach prioritization, what I mean is, Force ranking, one to 10. What are your priorities? What is number one? If you could do one thing, what would it be? What is number two? What is number three? And so we move away from these categories around high priority or low priority and, and those clusters of, of work, which are still unwieldy and unmanageable, to an agreed list, force ranked. What do we agree is the number one priority across this group? we could only do one thing and we had to put all of our resources into that one thing, what would it be? And then once that's done, what's the next thing that we would do? So prioritization is about that force ranking across a group. And this is where the visibility piece comes in, right? So if we're talking about an IT organization as a whole, 
Maybe we've got a few thousand employees and a few thousand more suppliers. We're trying to understand the work that's going on across that group. We need that visibility. We need to see what have we got going on, what's our work in progress, and, and that visualisation of what's going on, more than simply a stack of project report cards and knowing what all the names are. We need conversations about outcomes. We need conversations about how the work's fitting together. We need that visibility across the entirety of the group so that when we make decisions and priority calls, we're making it in the context of seeing all of that work that's going on, all of that work that we're holding up, all of that value that we might be delivering to customers, all of those benefits that are due across the organization. So the visibility piece is what starts to set that first layer so that we can get a good view of the landscape in which we are making decisions. So obviously, the further up the stack you go, the greater the visibility you need. Now that's not detail, that's simply visibility. And there's a level of understanding that goes along with that. And so when we start to prioritize, we've got this visibility, we can start to see what's going on across the organization. And then we wanna have conversations. What is the most important thing? Not what's my favorite strategic theme? What's my focus for the next 12 months? What's my vision for the, not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about specific initiatives. What's the first thing that we would do? If we could do only one thing, what would that be? And going back to real clarity about the work that we're doing and the sequencing of that work. Now, does that mean that we're only gonna do one thing at a time? No, of course not. We've probably got multiple things in progress. But that's into this space of understanding and making sure that we're not stacking up too much on our plate and equally that we've got enough going on that people have stuff to do. So that's okay. We still want to see that priority rank because we still want to have that agreement across the whole of the group. This is what we all believe is the most important thing. There's a number of ways to facilitate that conversation but what you're really looking for is the clarity of what do we agree is the most important thing across the entire group with the full context of all of the work that we've going that is going on that's in progress. My recommendation is that you meet regularly for these conversations. So you start to build a rhythm around checking in with your colleagues. Do we still agree that this is the most important? Is it ready? We're ready to start. Can we do this work? Maybe we can't do number one, but we could do number two. Is, is that okay that we bump that priority? But if you get into this rhythm of having those regular conversations that are predicated on the visibility of the work across the group, regular conversations about what's the most important thing in the context of the entirety of our business environment and the entirety of the work that we've got in, going on in progress, and we start to build that rhythm every couple of weeks, we're meeting, we're discussing, we're drip feeding the work through to our teams, what you'll find is that you get better outcomes around the predictability of your timelines. You get better outcomes around the predictability of your finances and your financial spend. You get better conversations about dependencies between work. It will naturally mean that you start to groom work in a way so that you're minimizing those dependencies. Better conversations about internal resourcing. And so your sequencing, your flow starts to pick up, you start to build that momentum, and it means that you're delivering more value more often, you're having conversations about transparency of benefit and value, breaking work down into outcomes that are tangible, that people start to understand across the group, and you'll build that context, that strategic perspective in your team. Really, really, really crucial when we're trying to move into a world that's more chaotic, more complex, and it's demanding more of us as leaders to have that breadth of view whilst also being able to deliver on our subject matter expertise. So that's what I wanted to share today. That was a bit of a follow-up from last week. Always get a few questions around, around the visibility piece. Here is a tangible example of how you can start to build on that visibility and utilize that to your advantage. Start getting into the conversations about priority. Not the category of high, medium, low, and people down in the work trying to make decisions because you weren't clear. Get really, really clear. What are your top 10 things across the group? Have the gnarly conversations because the reality is if you're not having those gnarly conversations at your level, somebody down on the ground is going to be making those decisions anyway. They're happening today in your organization. It's simply that you're choosing not to be visible, choosing not to be aware of those conversations that are going on. So get out there and start your own prioritization forum. 
that's it from me this week. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Um, and that it might be maybe as sunny as it is in Glenorchy today. Get out there and enjoy it. I'll see you next week.